Um, when we were together at the villa yesterday, you said in the 73 years, right, of the existence of the WTO, um, a female has been given a chance to head that institution. And not only that a female has, has been given the chance, indeed, let me remove my mask so people can see me very well. <laughs> and all of you can wear your mask while, I'm <laughs> while I have the freedom to. Not only that um, uh, a female has been given the chance to uh, superintend over the affairs of WTO, uh, but that a Nigerian um, has been given that chance. And we think that it is a, it's a recognition, recognition of Nigeria as a big economy, as the largest economy in Africa, as the largest populated um, country in Africa. And of course, you know when you talk about trade, you talk about where is the market. And if you're talking about the market in Africa, naturally the first, your first point of call, given that Nigeria has the largest population of over 200 million people, you would naturally think about Nigeria if you want your business to thrive in trade. And we are delighted that a Nigerian has been given that chance. Um, we thank you immensely. Also at the villa, I will congratulate you. Um, also at the villa, a couple of issues were raised yesterday uh, on, on trade logistics, that Nigeria is ranked 103 in the trade logistics amongst the countries. You raised issues about export finance, logistics, and the rest of them. You raised issues about um, <coughs> Um, supporting Nigeria in, in the area of um, COVID, vaccinations, and the rest of them. And I am, I am trying to say that we deeply appreciate the fact that you have raised these issues and we know, being one of us, that you will take these issues very seriously uh, to support Nigeria. Um, Nigeria is a country that needs help. And I dare say help from WTO. Um, and we would work with you. We do know, one way or the other, um, people may have seen or said a few things about the way we've conducted our trade, but I think it's important for me to say that some of those things have been done to also um, help, um, I, I know people don't like to use the word protect our own industry, but we're trying to say that we need to give a chance to our own local industries to grow. We need to give a chance for um, our local industries to create jobs and employment. The unemployment rate um, in Nigeria, and I dare say, is very high. Um, our youthful population, of people of the age of about 18 to about 40, is almost close to about 60% of our population. You can use that to your advantage. You could also use that to your detriment. Um, these, the fact that we need to create jobs for this set of people, we need to create an enabling environment for this set of people to live a gainful life means that we have a responsibility to do so. And in doing so, we would need the support of institutions like yourself um, to work with us. We may have faltered in a few areas, I'm not going to deny that. We will be willing to engage with you in areas where we have concerns. And if those concerns are addressed, I want to assure you, Madam DG, that we will work with you. Um, Nigeria is open to business to any part of the world, and we would like to work with you. You talked about <clears throat> vaccines, for instance. COVID-19 created, opened a lot of people's eyes as to what is happening. How those who may have left their markets, right? Uh, dependent on others, how they have suffered. We know that with, with COVID, 
those who were supposed to be exporting even food and drugs to other needy areas, they held back their food, they held back their drugs. And, and I must say that Nigeria being a very big market, being a big country, Nigeria with the, with the way God has endowed it with human and material resources, I think Nigeria should be able to do something to, I mean, to, to um, uh, shield its own people and ensure that we provide for our people uh, what they need so that we are not so heavily dependent on, on, on others. So you will see in the course of this, the Central Bank of Nigeria and uh, supported also by supporting the, the, the fiscal, we've done a couple of things that you may have read, providing stimulus, Private intervention, uh, restructuring loans, reducing interest rates on loans um, to to borrowers who have been adversely impacted through uh, the uh, co-chairmanship of myself and Ali Dangote. We even formed the coalition against COVID for, for the private sector, and it, close to almost about forty billion naira was raised. And in fact, this is the highest I've ever, I've ever seen a private sector, a group of private sector institutions in any part of the world raise to support the efforts of government to combat the, the pandemic and the rest of them. Uh, we built isolation centers all over the country, including Abuja. We provided stimulus by way of palliatives that were also distributed to our needy people in the country. No doubt there they would, they would always be some areas of um, 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 stumbles. But at least we did this to support the government. We, the Central Bank of Nigeria also came up and said, listen, because of this health pandemic, that we'll provide intervention funds through our banks to support people who want to, who want to expand their manufacturing plants. Nigeria, we used, to, we used to see the likes of GSK, Bicham, all of them, Nigerian German chemicals are very prominent pharmaceutical companies in Nigeria. But for one reason or the other, these factories closed because of certain inefficiencies in our system. We are determined to make sure that those inefficiencies are resolved. We are trying as much as possible working in government to ensure that the needed infrastructure that, we, that they are put in place. We are trying, we are working through our ease of doing business uh, committee to ensure that we make life easy for people who want to do business in Nigeria. And you, being the DG of WTO, we would need your help. Nigeria needs to be given a chance to reset and diversify its economy. You are our sister, you are our mother, we need your support. We would engage with you, whether virtually or fiscally. You want us to come in any part of the world, we will hold your dress, I hold you and come with you to ensure that you help us to carry our story to the world so they understand that Nigeria needs help and that Nigeria is ready to work, but that we need help and we'll work with you. In the area of even vaccines, only last week, we, we even had to commission, we set up a body of experts to look at um, researches that have been conducted by some Nigerians mm -hmm. and all that. And I'm happy, you are a medical doctor. I mean, ivermectin uh, is something that people have looked at, where there may be, if you read, we are still conducting, re conducting research and we are funding part of that research on ivermectin. We are willing, um, so we are talking to a few manufacturing companies here who are willing to produce vaccines, but they will need collaboration from uh, agencies or multilateral agencies abroad, and we would like to work with you. We are ready to provide the financing for this. Uh, we have Naira, we don't have dollar. Um, so if you need Naira, yes, and then you want to import the equipment, we'll give you the foreign to import the equipment, whatever you need to do to conduct your research, so that Nigeria being the biggest country in Africa, the biggest economy in Africa, I think Nigeria needs to stand up at this time and be counted. That is why we need your support. And we thank you so much again for coming this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Well, um, it's nice to be here. It feels familiar uh, coming back here. Your Excellency Pamsek uh, of the Federal Ministry of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Ambassador of Barbados uh, to the UN institutions and the WTO in Geneva. Your Excellencies, Ambassador Tunde Mustafa and uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Adamu, um, <clears throat> Directors of the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, 
gentlemen and ladies. I did see a lady of the press. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. I just want to, to, to start by uh, thanking the governor for um, what you've just said, you know, the frank discussion and uh, the points you've raised. And um, I'm happy to be here to, to talk to you because there are several things uh, with the central bank that I think it's important to discuss with you and your senior management team. But I want to take some of the points one by one. I want to begin with the COVID uh, and the vaccine. After this, we are going to see the presidential task force. And I'm particularly happy and proud that we were able to get the first set of doses of uh, vaccines to the country uh, with another 12 million doses to follow. Um, and I know, remember you're calling me very concerned about and asking how the private sector could help. Um, and this is my role with the, the COVAX and the assembly of the WHO working on trying to get these vaccines here. You called, you were concerned, you said what could the private sector do, and we talked about their help in logistics. Um, because once the vaccines arrive, distributing them properly is also a very difficult thing. And I really want to congratulate you on having assisted uh, to make that happen. Um, th this is a, a very good thing. I'm working with the private sector to raise the substantial amount you did to make sure we, that our people have access. So th thank you for doing that and uh, congratulations on that. Uh, we, the, the, um, let me push further on, on the issue of the pandemic and the impact it has had on our economy and our health system. It has now opened our eyes as you said, to see that uh, we need to start doing something about the pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria. Um, we, Africa itself imports over 90% of the pharmaceuticals it, it uses. This is according to the Economic Commission on Africa. And uh, with a population, with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, a market of 1.3 billion people, of which Nigeria is the largest with over 200 million, I think there is room we should ask ourselves the questions you raised, Governor. Why is it that the pharmaceutical companies that opened here struggled and closed? What are we doing to make sure, as you said, this doesn't happen? Uh, what are we doing to see that our own domestic manufacturers of pharmaceuticals have the appropriate environment they need? We've now seen what happens. If you have this pandemic and you don't have some ability to provide, you have to wait. Sometimes in AQ where there's supply scarcity. And uh, we've been pushing and pushing through COVAX, but you know, you see everybody is demanding these vaccines. So I think, and, and medicines, I think we must learn the lessons now because there'll be another pandemic in the future. What are we going to do now to uh, establish the capacity, reinvite investment into that sector? And yesterday with Mr. President, I mentioned that we should start thinking of establishing capacity to manufacture vaccines now. It takes time. It takes time. It takes years. This is a business I know something about, to be able to have a certified manufacturing plant. So we should start now to see how, with a public-private partnership, we could begin to attract investment. And uh, perhaps later we'll talk a little bit more about it, because one, at least one vaccine manufacturer approached me and said he had tried to set up something here, but. The atmosphere was not um, very welcoming. So, Governor, I just want to raise that, that we need to ask ourselves about our environment for investment, both for our domestic private sector as well as um, the foreign private sector, so we can support our own pharmaceuticals. Um, and as I say, this, this is one of those areas where I see tremendous opportunity. You know, I'm always looking at the cup half full rather than half empty. Yeah, I see an opportunity for us to do much better, create more jobs. We have the talent in terms of people we need in this country. So let's create the right environment to, for manufacturing in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and um, so this, that's one set of areas where I think we can really uh, do something. I want to push uh, a bit further on trade logistics. You spoke about the fact that I mentioned yesterday that Nigeria ranks 103 out of 167 in the trade logistics index. So it isn't uh, very good. But again, 
This is an opportunity for us to improve. If our logistics are not sound, we don't have the kind of transport system, the kind of energy system we need, uh, we are not going to be able to move. So that's an area in which we can try to improve. And the private sector is very much needed. You know, logistics in many countries also carried out by the private sector. The government partnering with the private sector, private sector can do quite a bit. And I'll have an opportunity to talk to them uh, uh, today. So we need to improve in that area. If we want to diversify uh, um, our sources of revenue, because our, our economy is already diverse. But like I said, and I will never tire of saying it, how do we add more value to our products in this country? Yesterday I gave the example of share butter and sesame seed, which is very much needed and sought after for cosmetics. We are one of the largest producers, but for a long time we could not sell in markets abroad because the quality was not up to standard. We had issues with sanitary and phytosanitary uh, barriers that uh, we couldn't meet. But the WTO with the International Trade Center was able to come in and uh, working with a cooperative, uh, uh, do a lot of work to improve quality, get NAFTA certification, and thereafter, they're selling in so many markets. As I'll elaborate further in a speech today to Egypt, Jordan, Dubai, you know, and now they've penetrated the UK and US as well because we were able to help that cooperative in your state upgrade the quality. That's one example where the WTO can actually deliver specific support and touch the lives of ordinary men and women in this country. And that's what we are aiming to try to do. But uh, so, uh, permit me for, uh, um, or forgive me for spending a little bit of time on this issue. The reason is I feel that we need to begin to talk about the transition of this economy. Uh, from an oil and fossil fuel based economy to one that is dependent on other sources of revenue and job creation. We have maybe two or three decades to make this transition. And uh, the reason is that the world is moving extremely fast away from the use of fossil fuels. Some countries have said that by 2025 they will no longer have cars based on uh, uh, on petroleum in their country to all be electric. China is providing incentives to its young people to make sure they buy electric cars. In Europe, they are moving very fast to lower carbon emissions. So we, being a fossil fuel-based economy, need to think about what this means and how do we transition to other areas. This is the big task in front of Nigeria, and I want to see us holding more conversations about this and tapping those sources, services, a very important source. We saw that uh, uh, Whiskey and Burma Boy <laughs> won prizes, and I want to congratulate them because they're exporting Nigeria's uh, uh, music and talents abroad, and people are buying this. We, we have music, we have art, we have uh, movies, Everywhere I go abroad, people, the diaspora of Africans keep talking about how Nigeria movies, they love them. So the, we should not neglect the creative industries because they create a lot of jobs for our young university graduates. And we must see how we can support these areas. I would later on ask Ambassador Chad Blackman to say a few words because he's the chair of the Trade and Environment Committee at the WTO to talk a little bit about what this means. So let's focus. I know, Governor, you've been working on trying to work with the Ministry of Finance and others to, to see how we can create jobs in other sectors of the economy. And I think we, we, we need to look at this. Export finance. Uh, I raised it with the um, Minister of Finance yesterday, trade finance. And if, perhaps if you can say a few words about where we stand with this. Uh, the WTO has been partnering with the IFC to try to provide more access to trade finance by guaranteeing letters of credit. We, the, we even have a project where the fees have been lowered for women-owned enterprises. And this is an area where the WTO, we have a great deal of interest in trying to correct the inequalities, those excluded from globalization and from the benefits of trade. Trade has lifted millions and billions out of poverty. But 
you know, some people have also been left behind, even in rich countries. How does the WTO work to try and lift people up? That's why we want to work with women entrepreneurs, with micro, medium, and small enterprises to try to bring this kind of expertise that I talked about that can improve their living standards. That's one area the WTO is working uh, very hard. Another is e-commerce. Um, this is now the digital economy is here to stay. And actually, our young people are doing well there. I've been giving the example of Flutter Wave that was recently invested in a fintech a payment sys platform um, that has been invested in and is valued at uh, hundreds of millions of dollars now. But it's not the only one. We have other young people who are doing things in technology. And this is the kind of thing we need to support our young people uh, to make use of the digital economy. We need to support our women to be able to trade. You know some Rwandan women sold their coffee to people in China directly on the internet and they made four dollars more per ton than they would have selling through intermediaries. So we need to start thinking of how we shift uh, a lot to the digital economy. The, the WTO is undergoing uh, some negotiations now uh, on e-commerce, plurilateral, and Nigeria is very active uh, in being one of the supporters of that. Let me um, uh, then uh, um, quickly move to a, a, a little bit of a touchy area. You talked about protecting our industries, and I just want to say that WTO has what we call trade remedies, which can help us. Without banning things, we can be able to protect our industries against dumping and cheap exports and, uh, sorry, cheap imports and so on, if we use those remedies. Um, I understand Nigeria is uh, trying to establish a trade remedies authority, mm -hmm. and I want to strongly support that. So we can use those remedies as a tool to help our industries to grow. Um, because some of the issues I raised yesterday, and Governor, I have to ask you all <laughs> to tell you not to be upset, but as DGWTO, you know, I have to raise this about the issue of the uh, BOP. Um, uh, we have a complaint against us by the EU about the use of uh, uh, the, the, the violation of the balance of payments agreement with respect to trying to protect the dairy industry. And uh, they feel that this is not the right instrument. So as DGWTO, I have to make this known. But this is an issue which you have said you would like to engage on uh, in a little more detail. So we can discuss that later and how to go about it. So uh, in short, I, I want to say that um, I, I think that we have what it takes in this country, particularly in our young people, to do the necessary, which is to look forward as to how we are going to create jobs and move this economy in the direction that will support our youth in the future. There are opportunities that can be had to improve trade in services, trade in goods, so that our economy can climb out of this pandemic recession that we are in faster than would have been the case. I know it's tough now, but we can do it. And I just want to end on that note of encouragement and uh, ask for your support in, in, in these particular areas. So thank you. If you don't mind, I want to give Ambassador Chad Blackman a couple of minutes to talk about uh, the transition and trade and environment. As you would have seen over the last year, the demand for such a uh, commodity has been on the decline. But in every crisis, there is opportunity. And one of the things that the Trade and Environment Committee of the WTO has been doing for some time is trying to get member states to understand what are the tangible opportunities in, in terms of the sustainability agenda. And using the fact of what the governor said, Nigeria is the largest economy in, the, in Africa. It is the largest economy with the largest population. So therefore, you have a comparative advantage in terms of what you can do. So therefore, how do you transition your economy into a sustainable one? And I can tell you, the economy in the world, not just in Africa, and this is something that you can think about, the economy in the world that will produce goods and services that are sustainable, fit for the environment, will be the economy that is going to be ahead of the global curve 
and therefore it will renown to the benefit of your domestic economy because your exports will have a greater demand. As you heard the Director General allude, companies and, and the private sector in, in, uh, abroad, they're now moving away and also offering incentives for goods that are sustainably uh, strong. So therefore, if you think about that in terms of your manufacturing now, what are the sorts of goods that you can produce that can be sustainable and therefore target strategically when you're exporting abroad, that is the sort of thing that you have. And as I said, you have a very strong and robust private sector in Nigeria. There is no doubt about that. So therefore, conversations ought, also ought to be had with your uh, scientists, if your inventors. What is the gap in the market globally? And how can Nigeria fit and produce for that gap? And once you start to think in those terms, you will then start to see um, a shift. Equally, there are lots of opportunities. For example, the issues of plastics pollution. Countries around the world are now banning single-use plastics. But if you're banning a, a, a resource, then there has to be an alternative. Because, for example, in the use of uh, e-commerce over the last year, particularly in the advent of COVID-19, there has been an increase in online sales of goods. And as you know, most of these things are packaged in plastics. But if, you're, if countries are moving away from the use of plastics, then you have to find an alternative because business will not stop. Therefore, if there is a gap in the market or there's a potential in the market for your investors, for your business sector to start to create things that the market needs, but is sustainable. So as I said, in, in moving away, as the Director General alluded to, there are lots of things that you can also look at. And also, for example, the issue of, of the circular economy. And I'm glad that we're having this conversation in the central bank because when you talk about the circular economy, you're talking about the use of goods that have gone um, out of their life cycle and there are no waste, but you can then reuse them into other methods. However, the issue has been that developing countries face a financial constraint. How do you finance developing countries' capacity to be able to um, enter and, and really maximize the potential in that market? So I think all in all, um, once your, your country can get this conversation going, um, inspired by the words of the Director General, and, and, and echoing the sentiments of the, the governor, I think Nigeria and the, the continent can really be um, a game changer. Because let's face it, by virtue of the continental free trade agreement that you now have, you are now the largest economic bloc globally. Globally. And you now have to use that opportunity to turn that in a way that this continent can thrive for its person and citizens, but equally, be the exporting hub globally, but have the comparative advantage in sustainable goods. So I thank you very much. In responding to some of the issues that you, you, you raised, you talked about what, trade logistics and the rest of them. And um, it's important that Nigeria needs to really sit up and talk about how to improve its transportation infrastructure, energy infrastructure, um, so that we begin to talk about how do we effectively move goods of food from farm to market in a way, and then from market even not only for domestic consumption, but also for export, uh, I mean, where, where, where this would happen. And I think that's to say that, yes, we're doing a lot in this direction. For instance, uh, the President only a few months ago um, approved um, um, that we should set up an infrastructure corporation where uh, the central bank, AFC, NSIA will be raising about equity of about 1 trillion naira, and then we're going to be going to the debt market to raise almost about 14 trillion naira to see to how we can improve on Nigeria's infrastructure. Not just road, we talk about ports, we talk about other areas where we think there are deficits that will help to improve um, the logistics, the logistics um, uh, in Nigeria. And so we'll be calling on the private sector um, eventually to come work with us uh, to see the, how we can achieve this. Uh, we're thinking effectively of how to aggressively resuscitate Nigeria's commodity exchange again, um, so that um, on one hand, you will find those buyers who want to buy those goods, and on the other hand, the commodity exchange stands in between uh, to also negotiate and also buy uh, from those who are, who, who are produced those goods. So those are all the things we're doing. I believe that the next, <coughs> the next two, three years will be very exciting, because the Nigerian government also um, being supported by more and fiscal authorities are working aggressively to see to how 
some of the inefficiencies that make it difficult for people to conduct their businesses logistically and all that we resolve resolve all those and we I repeat we will be engaging with your team uh, on these issues. I thank you Madam DG <coughs> in helping to resolve what I call uh, some of the um, weaknesses that we find in, in the promotion of Nigeria's export. Uh, share butter, sesame seeds, gum arabic and the rest of them. It might interest you Madam, Madam DG that Nigeria would be the largest producer of sesame seeds. I mean, sesame seeds and even share butter. And I know here in Niger State, Niger State, says, uh, share butter seeds, right? They drop. They, when when they when they when they when they mature, they drop and people throw them away. And Nigerians have been trying as much as possible to see to how can we improve standards, quality, um, so that we can even export them and make money. What, you, what we have seen in Nigeria before your intervention is that our own shea butter is taken from Nigeria through the borders and taken to, to one of the, I don't want to mention it, one of the West African countries and they say that the ones who produce this shea, shea butter seeds. So those are the things where we need to think of how can we open up Nigeria. We need your help in these areas. Trust me, we will not, they, the current administration is very, very serious about opening up Nigeria so that we can begin to talk about, you know, moving Nigeria away from, like you use the word, fossil fuels, or moving Nigeria from, from an oil-dependent economy to a, a, what we can say, a, a country that is endowed in even non-oil areas. And we have those endowments. It is just that we have to work at it. They will need help of multilateral institutions like yourself to work with us. Luckily, you are there uh, from Nigeria. Of course, transition of Nigeria uh, economy from oil to non-oil, uh, whether we like it or not, we don't have a choice. You are very correct. By, is it 2025? Even in the UK, 25, 2027, they will stop. In fact, right now, you, you go into what is called is it congestion areas in the, in the UK. You pay for using diesel, diesel fuel. And in the next one or two years, you begin to pay for using petrol, petrol vehicles. You'll be paying extra for it. So it's going to be more, become more expensive for you to drive those vehicles. You must move away, move to electric, electric run, run vehicles. And that is the direction we should move in. And that's why for those of us who think oil, oil is everything, oil is not everything. And when the time comes, we'll just be using our oil for maybe our domestic gas and the rest of them because nobody's going to need them. Where we're going to begin to talk about it is from oil that we generate revenue to run our economy. It will become very useless. And that is why we would like to work with anybody that is interested um, uh, to work with us uh, to see to how Nigeria transitions from a fossil fuel, I mean, to, from an oil economy um, to a non oil <coughs> economy. You talked about the creative industry. And again, I'm going to join you to also congratulate. Bonaboy, Whiskey, David, these young, 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 young men are doing very, very well. Uh, I went to a, a barber shop, and some of my friends also went into a barber shop in London and in the U.S. I felt thrilled that uh, in one of those barber shops, they were playing Whiskey, they were playing David Doe music. You understand? But we want to see how these people can truly, truly harness their potential so they can earn revenue, earn revenue from people playing their music in different parts of the world. We at Central Bank of Nigeria, we set up our credit, credit industry financing, financing initiative. So far, close to almost about 500 million has been disbursed. The president has given approval for, for the bankers' committee to re, re, renovate National Arts Theatre. By the by time that renovation is completed, we are building a music hub, movie hub, fashion hub, and also IT infrastructure hub in that area. It's going to be costing a lot of money. These are some of the things that the government is doing to make Nigerian youth know that they mean a lot to us and that we can use their creative potentials for advantage of Nigerians and not to the disadvantage of, of Nigerians. Okay, we're going to go now. Yeah, okay. So, um, I think, um, I'm going to talk, talk about dairy, talk about dairy. Just, that's the last point I want to raise. <laughs> Madam Chair, we called a meeting about six years ago when I resumed. I said, look, that Nigeria has dairy potentials. 
uh, uh, the cattle and the rest of them, let us see what can be done. Nothing was done. We called the companies. Two years ago, we started again. We said, listen, we're going to start a program where we're going to place on FX restriction those who want to import dairy into Nigeria. And six of them came on board. The Friesland, Tijiala, a few of them. And at a meeting in next, up next door there, what did they say? They said, um, Governor, you have been putting us under pressure to invest locally in dairy industry. What do you do to those who are not doing anything about it? At that meeting, we took a decision that those who are not embracing our own backward integration program in the dairy industry should be restricted. It was not my decision. It, is, it was a decision taken. But what we are saying is this, Madam Chair, lastly, lastly, lastly. Hmm? <laughs> Before you were probably born, or before I was born, Frisland Campina has been importing milk into Nigeria. How come for over 60 years, nothing has been done by this company to backward integrate and begin to produce dairy in Nigeria? Does, not, does it mean Nigeria does not have the potential? The answer is no. So that is why we, in the Monetary and Fiscal Authority, must put everybody's feet on fire to ensure that the right things are done for the good of Nigeria and Nigerians. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry, Governor. I have to just say one word. <laughs> I am, and the WTO is completely, and I think I've said it over and over, for uh, developing our own capacity. You know that's my mantra. We must do it to create jobs. We can't export jobs. I think, Governor, I hear you. The only place where we might have a divergence is, uh, it's not even a divergence, it's the approach. So what I'd like to discuss with you is how do you use the retail trade remedies? And it is a very detailed discussion, so yeah. I think we should take it upside. Yeah. We can use those trade, trade remedies to help us develop our own industry and our own capacity for dairy and other products. So mm -hmm. I'm completely with you. I think it's a question of how. So perhaps we can discuss that. Thank later. you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. group oh, group photographs. Group photographs. Group photographs. Group photographs.